If you've watched our video on minutes of angle, you already understand what they are. Now we're going to talk about how to put them to use. Hi, I'm Ryan Kleckner with the National Shooting Sports Foundation. In this video, we're going to talk about how to gather and use DOPE. Now, DOPE is a term we use that stands for Data on Previous Engagements. And by collecting that, you know what you and your rifle system do, so you can repeat it the next time you shoot a target at that distance. Well, when you first start out, you may not know what you need to hit targets at certain distances. And the first place people are likely to go are the box of ammunition online to find data charts. Those are all great. Those are good places to start. Matter of fact, I like to call those try dope. If you have nothing else to try, try that. That'll get you at least close. But odds are you're going to have to fine tune that data to your gun and your system. You see, every scope, every rifle, and every bullet act differently. Your scope may not track the same from rifle to rifle and so on, so it's important that you get the data that's unique to you. Let me give you an example. On boxes of ammunition, it's very common to find data on the back of the box that gets you close. For example, this box right here gives me the drop in inches I'm expected to have at certain distances. Well, let's put this to practice with what I know. I know that my rifle shoots with 12 minutes of angle of elevation at 500 yards. Well, if I look at this box right here, it says I'm going to drop if I look straight at the 500 yards, it says 51 inches. Well, thinking back to the minutes of angle, we know that 51 inches is just over 10 minutes of 500 yards. Well, I just told you I shoot 12 minutes. If you look over here, a lot of the boxes start with their zero at 200. And I've already talked about why I like 100 yard zero. 100 yard zero means I never have to go below zero. So the difference between that zero at 200 and at 100 is look at that, two minutes. You add those two minutes onto that 10, that's how you get the 12. This is just an example of how confusing it can be to rely on this data. So what I suggest is go ahead and start with that if you like, but shoot it for yourself and record the information. You see, in recording it, it's important to keep environmental factors, where you're shooting at, what happened, that's all good to keep as a journal and as a log. But there's a big mistake I see with new shooters. One of the biggest mistakes I see is they get excited about collecting dope and they go out and buy something like this called a dope book. And this is a book that has waterproof paper that has all these charts in here that look like you can use for all sorts of targets at different distances. Well, sure it's great, but the problem is actually putting it into practice. If you take one of these pages and start filling out your information for a certain distance, that's fine, but the second you shoot a new distance, you need a new page. Before long, a few trips to the range, this thing is going to be full of information. And although you did a good job recording it, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to use it. Next time you're out there on that hunt and the elk pops up at 500 yards, you're not going to be able to flip through this to try and compare what the environmental factors are like and get an answer. You need to know what your rifle needs on the scope in order to hit that target. So I'm going to talk about simpler ways than this to do that. One of my favorite ways is just simple index cards. You put it in the cheek pack of your rifle, you can pull it out, you can write right down on there what you experienced, you can collect them at home, and after a while you'll start to see a trend and you'll be able to see what your rifle needs. Now when you write things down, I advise against mechanical pencils or regular pens that have a lot of moving parts, because when you're out there hunting, you're out there at the field, they get dirt in them, they get stuck, and they start breaking. One of my favorite things is a contractor's pencil. It's durable, and I can sharpen it with my pocket knife. Worst case scenario, if it breaks in half, I now have two pencils. It's easy to work with. And once I write this down and I learn my data, I don't have to rely on this. This doesn't have to be waterproof. You see. I like to keep my data consolidated with my firearm in different ways. One way I've done this is by putting it on the turret of my scope. You see, many scopes come out nowadays with what we call a bullet drop compensator or a BDC. And around the turret, in addition to the minutes of angle, they have suggested distances that you should be shooting at that elevation. Again, that suggested distance is just suggested. It's not right necessarily for you. So what I did here is I just took the time on my computer and I printed out the actual elevation adjustments I need at certain distances in big numbers. So all I need to do is turn to the 4 for 400, to the 5 for 500, and so on. That's a real quick and simple way that I can get to a certain distance on this system. I don't need to reference a book. Another good method is inside your scope cap. It's very popular to take masking tape, line the inside of your scope cap with masking tape, and then take a pen and write in small numbers your data for, I don't know, every 100 yards, every 150 or every 50 yards if you have the space, that's a good spot for it too. I've seen plenty of guys take the index card that you write all the information on and tape it right to the inside of their buttstock so it stays waterproof and it's always with the rifle. Here's another system that's nice. It's a little add-on to a scope here. This one's made by Leupold and it's a, a little chart that actually just pulls out to the side. 
Pencil writes on it great, and it retracts and stays with your scope wherever you need it. So whenever I need to shoot something, if I ever wonder what my dope is, I can pull it out, peek at it, put it back, and make my adjustments. The key is, these are much simpler ways to get what you need on your gun to shoot at that distance. You're still going to need to worry about other environmental factors, but the biggest effect on your bullet, it's gravity. Good news is, though, it's the easiest to account for, and with a system like this, you're going to have a lot better time taking those shots. I have a target out here at 660 yards. Let's see how the system works. I'm going to use my turret. I'm going to turn right to the 650 yard mark. Give it an extra one minute. Let's see how it goes. It's that easy. You go out and gather your own dope, collect it and put it into practice, you'll have results like this too. Your next step is to go out to a range and try it. If you need a place to shoot, check out our website, wheretoshoot.org. And while you're out there, remember, firearm safety depends on you.